Hey everyone, this is Chris, sometimes known as LOTR Deck Tech, and I am playing with camera angles and light settings today. Uh, so I'm going to look a little different down in the corner. Hopefully the green screen behind me is going to behave a little better now that it's got more light directly on it. And I am, as always, bringing you a new deck. Uh, today's deck is sort of focused on getting off to a very strong start. Uh, this is going to be a pretty explosive hero lineup. We have Arwen, Tactics Aeon, and Air Store. Uh, so we're going to draw a ton of cards round one, sort of hoping to get ourselves set up to quest really hard right off the bat. Uh, Aeon and Air Store are going to be our sort of defensive and a little bit offensive ends initially. Uh, Aowen, of course, can ready and make a huge 10 power attack, which clears up just about any enemy in the game if you engage it at any time. Uh, so she's our ace in the hole. She can definitely dig us out of some pretty tight spots early. Aristor is going to be fishing for Protector of Lorien and a Burning Brand, which will allow him to defend a lot of attacks without really worrying about taking much damage or having to deal with any nasty effects. Uh, and Arwen is just going to help accelerate resources on Aristor and give us something to do with extra cards until we get Protector of Lorien or something else like it in play. Our ally mix is basically pushing for really high stats. Uh, we have all the Ents, sort of. Uh, we have Treebeard, we have Quick Beam, we have Wandering Ents, and we have Welling Hall Preservers. Uh, all of these allies produce a ton of stats in just about every area of the game, but they're slow. And very heavily lore focused, we'll, we'll deal with that. Sort of counterbalance this, we also have all the Outlands allies we can take in the deck pretty easily. We've got the Onphalus Herdsman, we've got Ethere Swordsman, we've got, uh, what's the next one? Hunter of Lamedon, and three copies of Knights of the Swan. So collectively all of that is hopefully going to give us a huge questing and attacking force. Uh, they're not very good defensively, so when we have to deal with a ton of enemies, that could be really bad. But we're hopefully just going to keep everything under control much better than that. Uh, let's see what else we have in here that is worth mentioning. Uh, a decent healing mix. There's Eorith and two copies of Warden of Healing. Uh, the Welling Hall Preservers will help heal the Ents, but the other healers are good for our heroes and our Outlands cards. Uh, relevant attachments that I did not mention. Light of Alinor is going to allow probably Aristor to quest and stay back to defend. Uh, we have Steward of Gondor with a good harvest in order to help us deal with the fact that lore is by far the most common and expensive sphere in the deck. And you know, as a final finisher, we got a couple copies of Will of the West in order to help us recycle our deck once we dig all the way through. I should say, for my own benefit, that there are only two copies of Will of the West in the deck right now. It should be very rare to go through three times in a quest, uh, but if I don't remember that there's only two of them, I might discard the second one instead of playing it when I get the chance. So let's load up Octagon and see how it goes. All right, here we are in Octagon with the Treachery of Rudauer set up. Uh, this is the beginning of my opening hand, and I'm pretty sure I mulliganed this. I did not, so I can take a mulligan if I want. Which I think I will. Uh, having Will of the West in your opening hand is not amazing. This is a much better start. And we already did our setup, we've got the locations, we have the side quests, we have our ally Amarthiel. And, you know, Thardir, which we're going to have to deal with later. So, let's get this show on the road. One, two, three, four. Well, there is the early Will of the West. 
but already off to a good start. I use good harvest and name leadership. Uh, I am going to discard a Will of the West to put a resource on, let's do Arwen. One, two plays for an Ethere Swordsman. One, two pays for Steward of Gondor on Aristor. Gives me two more lore resources, which I think at this point are going to be Protector of Lorien and an Onphilus Herdsman. So that is a decent chunk of willpower right away. Uh, and all these cards get to be sort of boosting fodder. I like Elven Spear. I don't know if I'm actually going to use it in this deck. Uh, it is definitely better for battle questing than it is for attack with Aristor as a defender. So. Uh, let's see which of these I would like to quest for. Ugh. Forget what's on the other side. But let's do Sift Through the Debris because I think this is the one that's going to give us sort of easiest time. It means we are at four threat in the staging area. That's okay though. Uh, we are gonna quest for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Up against three in the staging area. Well, that kind of sucks. Okay, up against, sorry, four in the staging area, my nine, uh, 10, 11, 12. Gonna be eight progress. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Explore the Great Hall and I. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I, I missed Undead. Discarded Seal the Tomb. So that was by far the uh, luckiest draw I could have gotten. Uh, let's travel to the Ancient Causeway and be very sad that I did not make any progress on Sift Through the Debris. We are going to discard the Warden of Healing at the end of the round. We also lose a time counter. And then we move on to the next one. Oh, I wish I had an extra tactics resource, but that's okay. Here is a Knights of the Swan. We have one willpower and one attack. This guy has one attack. This guy has two. Here is another Herdsman. So you get one and one of those. And here is a Quick Beam who comes in with a damage on him. Do I want a resource? I think I do want a resource. I'm gonna discard a Knights of the Swan for a resource on Arwen. Uh, it'll be good to be able to play Ethereal Swordsman when we get them. <sighs> At this point, I think it makes more sense to go for Quiet the Spirits. So here is two, five, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, uh, 15, 16. And I forgot, my threat should be three lower because of Eowyn's setup text. So, my 16 up against nothing in the staging area. Up against two in the staging area means I make 14 progress. One, two, and then 12 on the quest. Ancient Causeway is explored, raises my threat by two. Just two, right? Just two. And I will travel to Ruins of Arnor. Make it a little easier to quest through Sift Through the Debris if I choose that later. And we are ready for the next round. Refresh, remove a time counter, and move on. All right, well, this hand is easy. Uh, one, two, here is a 
Hunter of Lamadon. Um, can't play an extra quick beam. Don't really want to play a spear. Can't play a steward. Uh, I guess I'll discard steward for a resource on Aristor. And we're going to quest for Quiet the Spirits again, but I'm going to quest a little less heavily this time. 2, 5, 9, 10, 11. 11 should be good enough, and I can bump it to 13 if I want. Okay, Curse Dead. Just let me make sure that there aren't any more of these in here. There are not. It is going to engage with me because of the Quiet Spirits quest text. Uh, Alright, so one threat up against my 11 is 10 progress. One, two, th one, two, three, and seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which flips Quiet the Spirits into Daikonar's brand. Hmm. Cursed Dead is three attacks, so I don't want to claim it on a Marthial yet. All right, uh, Ruins of Arnor is cleared. We cannot travel. Cursed Dead is going to attack, which I will defend with a Marthiel. Uh, this could be super dangerous, by the way. That shadow effect does nothing, and it's only three attack to fight back, so Cursed Dead is destroyed. And we move on to the next round. Refresh, discard two cards, remove a time counter, I might be able to get ancient texts or sift through the debris, uh, but this one requires 24 progress right now, which is a little rough. I totally forget what all of them do, but mostly doesn't matter. All right. Well, burning brands are good. Uh, one, two, I can play an elven jeweler. Two, here is a Burning Brand, so now Aristor is a Shadow Cancelling Defender. Uh, and I think I will keep him ready to possibly use that this round. Discard, uh, I'll keep that for possible defense. Three, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen committed to the quest. Uh, and which quest am I going for? Oh yeah, Decipher Ancient Texts doesn't do much for me right now, because my allies don't contribute anything, so we're going for a Sift Through the Debris. Alright, 14 against nothing in the staging area. Alright, this is kind of gross. So up against 5, I make 9 progress. Uh, let's make it 10 progress, and drop my threat back down to 27. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, so not definitely good enough. But that's okay. Uh, we will travel to Ghostly Ruins. Brings it. Okay. Uh, thank you, Windows, for interrupting. Remind me later. Uh, I think... Okay, there we go. We're back. We're back. Windows almost ruined everything, but we are back. All right, so Cursed Dead comes back into the staging area. I do have to engage it. Gets a shadow card back over here. Uh, I will defend with Aristor. Discard a Burning Brand to boost my defense. So, no shadow effect means this wasn't going to do anything anyways. Uh, and I only need three attack to kill it, so that is Quick Beam. And Amarthiel can claim Daikonar's Brand. All right, refresh, remove a time counter, discard all the no cards in my hand, and we are on to the next round. Uh, this is pretty good. Here's a Protector of Lorien for Arwen. One, two, puts an Ethere Swordsman in play. So 
now my allies' allies are questing substantially harder. Two here is a wandering ent who is exhausted. Uh, and one more here is a Light of Valinor for Aristor. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think we're doing pretty all right. This is our final round to complete side quests, so let's see if we can get through, sift through the debris. We're going to send two, five, nine, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 24, 25, 26, 27 to the quest. Uh, realistically, the only bad thing that happens is curse dead. I could handle that. So, let's reveal an encounter card. It is a traitorous white. Uh, we've seen this as a shadow already. It's a pretty common shadow effect. So, 27 up against 2 threat is 25 progress. Here is 1, 2, 3, 4. Getting rid of ghostly ruins. And 21 brings us up to 31 out of the 24 that we need for Sift Through the Debris. Oops. Which flips it into Heirloom of Earcon. Uh, that is pretty great. We'll probably claim it on Aristor. I don't have to engage this traitorous white. But, I, but it might be worth it. I can't kill it this round. It's probably the biggest problem. Uh, so let's leave it. I will claim the Heirloom of the Archon on Aristor. And that's it for this round. So refresh. Remove a time counter. And now we immediately advance. Thardier is added to the staging area. I have to grab an undead enemy and add it to the staging area. So let's see what we've got in here. Uh, Dead Lord is obnoxious. Are these revealed? They're not revealed, so Surging Guy is maybe worth it. Cursed Dead, I just kind of don't want to deal with. Though pulling one out might be worth not having to reveal them. Um, White of Rudauer gets much worse later on, so I think I'll grab one of those. Uh, this side quest is out of the way. Shuffle the encounter deck. I think those are actually removed from the game, so we'll pop that up there. All right, so I only need 20 progress in order to clear Thardir's pursuit because I claimed two clues. And I have to deal nine damage to Thardir in order to make that happen. All right. I can handle that. Just Eowyn should be able to make pretty quick work of Thardir. So let's move on to the next round and be glad that we don't have to deal with time anymore. Hmm. Three will power on air store. Uh, one, two, three, I want a Welling Hall Preserver. One, two, I want a Hunter of Lamadon. Uh, I only have to engage two enemies this round unless I quest very badly. Uh, and I can probably defend them with air store and Marthial, or I could be a little more risky and use Wandering Ent because now I have healing in play. I don't even have to kill the White of Rudauer. Yeah, so let's save these for defense against Thardir. Yep, okay, good plan. Uh, three, four, five, six, 
10. 16. 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, 21. Send 27 to the quest right now. Damn it. I mean, like, I can lose Quick Beam, that's totally fine. Or this Wandering Ent. So, 27 up against currently 8 in the staging area. Reveals a traitorous white that I do not have to deal with right now. So, 10 in the staging area means I make 17 progress. Forced to engage Thardir and the white Rudar. We got shadow effects in that order. Uh, Aristor will defend Thardir, discarding two to boost his defense to four. So he's going to take two damage. That shadow effect is nasty. But I do have clues, so no big deal there. Uh, yeah, and Amarthiel will defend the White of Rudaur. Raise my threat by three. Uh, I think that's fine. I was planning on raising it anyways. So I have four, five, six, sixteen attack available to me if I ready Eowyn, which I will do. Bring my threat up to 35. So 10, 11, 14, 16 is gonna put 12 damage on Thardir. Uh, so this means that even if a sorcery is revealed, I will survive, or I will have enough to escape Thardir's clutches, uh, and he can kill an ally, that's no problem. I obviously can't do anything about this white root hour, but we're planning on winning next round anyways, so let's just try and avoid the losing part. All right, moving on to the next round. I do heal one from this Long Hall Preserver off of Treebeard. Um, all of these things, what is worth it? Guess I'm going to play Eorith and exhaust her immediately, spending one of these to heal Aristor by two. I'm going to save these for defense, because I might have to take an attack in the middle of questing. So, 3, 6, 10, 16, uh, 17, 20, uh, let's do 19, 21 instead. I'd rather lose the hunters than any of the allies, allies that do anything useful. So 21 up against 4 in the staging area, I need to make 3 progress. Pretty sure I got that on lock. Here is a white Rudaur who surges into Ruins of Arnor. Uh, so two, four, six, eight in the staging area. I make 13 progress, <laughs> which conveniently is enough to escape Thardir, even if you didn't get any clues. Uh, but I did. Thardir has taken enough damage to be slowed and we have escaped the treachery of Rudauer. Alright everyone, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.